Of course y'all know by now Wildlife Women is all about new adventures and one of the ones that we have decided to try and learn about is coon hunting. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> coon hunting. Right now at the time that we decided to learn about coon hunting it's actually not in season so we cannot kill a coon mm -hmm. and I'm really glad about that because when I first started hunting I decided I wasn't going to kill an animal unless I could eat it, and i um, not particularly happy about eating a coon. I've never tried coon, <laughs> and I don't know that I, well, I don't know. I have to think on that one. I don't know that I tried or not. I went back and forth on this, but there's people who eat coon, but I, I just, I just want to make a hat out of its hide. <laughs> I, uh, Daniel Boone, David Crockett, hat. <laughs> I'm sorry, is that bad of me? <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. But, you know, the way I look at it, too, is, you know, we've got a bad coyote problem, and if we do get a coon, then you can use that meat to lure in your coyotes and kill your coyotes because we need to save some of our fawns. They're just fawn killers. We'll, we'll let that be your plan. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> okay. I'm getting a hat out of it, <laughs> and I'm getting some coyotes in to kill. There we go. <laughs> I'm still working on that part, so eventually... I may be able to kill a coyote, but I, I'm working on it. But but my great friend, Bo, is a part of, or actually the president of Bracken County Coon Club. And he decides that, he, did I say Clune again? Clune. Sorry. We're in George Clooney's area, so we call it the Clune <laughs> Club. <laughs> I practiced over and over and over. Coon, 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 coon. And it still came out Clun, but that's okay. I say Clune too. Here we are, Bracken County. Wildlife Women has already stepped foot into your county. We're on our way to your coon club. Can you believe I'm going coon hunting? I've never coon been hunting? coon hunting in my really? life. Coons? But you know what? It sounds like fun, and I'm always out for an adventure. I'm always running or hiking or going somewhere, so we might as well try some coon hunting. <laughs> Let's see how this goes tonight. We Here we come, like... guys. Brecken County Coon Club. We're on our way. <laughs> Okay, we're either lost or we are really on our way to the Coon Club here in Bracken County. <laughs> um, I'm on a gravel road. Bridget's driving. I sound trying like a, to drive. Trying to drive, yeah. I sound like a real hick right now. We are hicks. We are. <laughs> we're from Southeast Kentucky, so that's just how we talk, people. But look at the road. I'm kind of excited that Siri's got us here, you know? Um. I'm really starting to lose my faith in the phone maps, GPS stuff, because we have basically should have called this trip exploring the countryside through Kentucky today. Seriously. We've seen some beautiful farmland though, and mm -hmm. obviously Horse we are country. in country now, so our tour of Kentucky is now almost complete. My friend Bo has been a big supporter of wildlife women. And he is the president of the Bracken County Coon Club and has actually won several uh, state championships and has some awesome dogs, my favorite being Freddie Fender. And he decided he was going to give us a, a class on coon hunting and about dogs and the types that you use coon hunting and also teach us about how you can actually compete. And who knew there was this much money in coon hunting? I know. I had no idea. I mean, it's, it's unreal. <laughs> you can earn all kinds of money doing some coon hunting. So, yeah. Which I may, I someday may do that. I don't know. I, I'm really excited about learning about it. Uh, it's not something I ever thought I would do because before I was in Wildlife Women and actually before I was doing much outdoors, coon hunters got on my last nerve. <laughs> I was up all night long on my porch telling them to get out of my property, quit your barking dogs, I can't sleep, and now here I am 
actually coon hunting. Going coon hunting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had the same problem happen to me once. I actually had somebody to come over on my property, and, and dogs was, like, howling and going crazy on, on my property and, like, woke me up, and I, like, went out and was hollering, like, what are you doing? And he's like, my dog's got away from me. And I was like, okay, you're on my property. Get off. And, but, yeah, I've had that to happen before, so. So this is going to be pretty interesting. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited about it, and uh, they, they, the club has actually all came out to support us, which was kind of cool. Everybody's all excited, and they're bringing their dogs and uh, sharing with us. They cooked an amazing meal, oh, and Lord. I'm all about that meal <laughs> more than I am the coon I think I went back for seconds on that oh, one. I ate <laughs> to potato sick. salad and ham, and it's a lot of good yeah. stuff. It's really good, like really good. Very good, so... If you ever want to do that again, just have the same food. Yeah. <laughs> so. Have us food. We'll come. <laughs> but anyway, we started out with a great class, and, and it was very informative. Uh, mm -hmm. I I'm, Melissa's a big dog person, so she knew a lot about dogs already. I'm very new uh, to dogs. I've not really had them or <laughs> petted them or <laughs> took care of them. Bridget has a little bit. I'm not saying that she's terrified of dogs. It's just she don't understand dogs. Period. Here with the Bracken County Coon Club and Bo Moore and the gang here are going to start teaching us a little bit about coon hunting. So it's wildlife women up in uh, Brooksville, Kentucky, and we're going to give you your first lesson on coon hunting. So enjoy. So Take it over, Bo. There's a lot of people out there that probably know these things we're going to talk about, but these ladies right here, for the exception of Lisa Tucker, has hunted just <laughs> a little bit. The rest of them have never hunted before. So, uh, as you can see, we have equipped some of them with some boots, chaps, uh, we call them frog legs. Uh, very quickly, that's uh, bike proof. Uh, you gotta have frog legs when you do that. Uh, lights, we got some lights here from Valley Creek. Thanks Valley Creek for donating some lights to us for the AKC Kentucky State Hunt next weekend. So, uh, a lot of them's got red lights, green lights, walking lights. Pretty bright. Oh, he probably goes, what, two, three miles? He can track him that far, maybe? Oh, yeah. Okay. Most of us only got to go a couple hundred yards. We get treed. Five dogs get deep alone. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the way we like them. We also have uh, uh, some training systems. Uh, you know, people's got their own opinions about how you train dogs, whether you use shocking collars, whether you don't. Uh, trust me, when the dog's running a deer through the country. And that's what Bose does a lot of. Uh, basically, up to about two miles, you can uh, you can just push a button and tone a dog, and it just gives a beep in their ear without shocking them. Uh, once you train them out in your yard, and they hear that beep, you don't have to shock them anymore. They'll come back in for the most part. So, uh, uh, a good tool to do training with for coon hounds, beagles, anything like that. Yeah, or your fiance turns you around the house trying to shock them with it to see if it works. Here. They're sitting on a tailgate with a bunch of buddies turning your dogs loose and telling stories from when you first started coon hunting to, to where you're at today. But there's also the world of competition hunting. And uh, this is one of your key tools when you're in a competition world. Right now, uh, in competition hunting, there's absolutely no packing of a gun. There's no harming of the animals. It's all based on a point system. Um, point system is striking a dog. Striking means when a dog barks. Uh, we got a scorecard there. Uh, uh, training a dog. Training a dog means when the dog is actually barking up the tree. Uh, we'll dem demonstrate some of this stuff when we go out hunting tonight. Uh, it's just like me talking and hearing other people in the background talk. Uh, you have to know what your dog sounds like in amongst the other dogs. Uh, you need to be able to pick those dogs out. And the way that the competition works is you group up with a cast of dogs. You turn those group of dogs loose, usually four dogs and a cat. Uh, some of your main breeds, of course, your walker is, is probably the most popular. There's, there's more walker dogs than there is any other breed throughout. Um, we have the English dog. The English can be red tick, blue tick, or tricolor. We have black and tan. We have red bone. We have the American blue tick, plot dog. Help me out, am I missing any? Leopard cur. Leopard cur. Leopard cur. Leopard cur. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, English dogs can come in a blue tick looking like that. Red tick, or it could be a tricolor with blue and red. So, Jay, you want to go grab a different one? I believe what we got coming up next on the tips of his feet. Get his tail up over his back, get his head stretched out. 
And that's why you see people that are holding them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, again, that's Ike. That's a rat. It's not here tonight. But you can ask that man going back to what, David? 1950s? Yeah. 1950s to date, he can tell you every dog in one every world, huh? He reads every magazine from front to back. And uh, he's not here today, or we'd ask him some questions. What's the popular magazine that you have? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Well, thank you both for the great yes. lesson on coon hunting. Thank and, and thank you for yeah. everything that you've done for us. And apparently, uh, coon hunting involves some major cooking yes. and, and a great okay. meal. So, both of the guys story. at the club has provided, uh, provided that with us. And we have baked ham, potato mm -hmm. salad, a cheese ball. Yes. Vegetable tray, uh, what else? Drinks, drinks, coffee. Yeah, you know, we they they were very kind to us. So Apparently, we when we come it. back, we're gonna have breakfast. Yes, <laughs> they're supposedly cooking breakfast for us. So. so the reason why we plan breakfast is because we have Walker dogs. They love to go deep and alone. <laughs> so once we cut loose, we'll probably not be back till about daylight. <laughs> so we'll all be hungry time we get back. Starved out. <laughs> Hey, this is James Sam with Kentucky Bugle Struts out there. This is Brandon Thomas. We're the co-owners here at Kentucky Bugles and Struts. It's that time of year again. Um, when it's a beautiful day here on one of our uh, private properties we've got to hunt, it's probably got about 75,000 acres on it. And if you got the chance to hunt Kentucky Elk this fall, whoo, man, are we excited. Give us a chance, give us a call. Talk to Brandon at 606-634-7640. He does all our booking. He does an outstanding job. Good luck. We hope to see you, but man, we're ready to make friends for life. We get schooled and learn all about how to coon hunt and uh, how the point system and all this works. And uh, of course, like we mentioned before, um, the hunting season isn't actually in. So we're going out just to actually look and spot and let the dogs work and see how it's all done. All right, we ready? Ready. All right, we got the wildlife women out. We just had a little seminar explaining to them about how to do a coon hunt. So we are at the spot. This spot is the secret spot we call Rock Lane. Not a lot of people know about it. And the big thing is, wildlife women best not come back to our spot. <laughs> I know this spot. So, ah. we're going to get the dogs. First thing they need to learn, when you cut the dogs loose, we tell you to line them up, collar them up, and cut them. So when we line them up, that means you stop, you bend down, collar them up, means you unhook the lead and you hold the collar in your hand. When they say cut them, you let the dog go. That means you, you've turned him loose. So we're gonna get the dogs out of the dog box. We're gonna line them up. We're gonna collar them up. And we're gonna cut them. Let's go. I'll, I'll tell y'all when. Y'all got them collared up? Collared up. All right, I'm sorry. Cast them. Cast them. Let them go. 
Hank Strup. I hear Freddy. <laughs> Who's across the road this way? Who got him down here? Hank. No, he's not. Down here. Freddy's down here. Dinner. Freddy's this way. Yeah, Freddy's down here and this is down here. I'm learning how to just handle a dog. That's true. <laughs> true. She's like, what do I do? What do I do? It's so funny, but I love her because I love being able to see her experience with new stuff. Like she likes seeing uh, my experience with new stuff also. <laughs> but it was pulling me. I was like, how? I can't even control it. Just pulling me, you know, down the hill, up the hill. I'm like, okay. She don't know how to be thing. boss to it, so you gotta be the boss. You gotta let them know you're I gotta, it. I gotta yeah. learn to be the boss. Yeah, you're boss to everybody else. You gotta be boss to. The <laughs> <laughs> gotta be boss. Yeah, to the and boss. it don't work. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> so I guess it don't work on dogs either. Oh. <laughs> but we we load up. We get the dogs um, loaded in their boxes in the back of the trucks, and we're all getting in these little four, two door and four door trucks and everybody's going to one particular spot. Of course, we're lost. We have no idea where we're going. Mm -hmm. It's and, really uh, dark, really yeah, dark out in the country, yeah. no street lights. Yeah, and um, uh, Bracken County chapter leader, Lisa Tucker, um, she actually is the one who organized the event and she had been coon hunting a few times. So she was just thrilled to have us girls come into her territory mm -hmm. and see how all this is being done. And so here we load up in all these trucks and everybody's heading out to the same place and we're just having a big old time thinking, oh my God, we're, we're going out in the dark. Woo! Oh, you know? oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just let the dogs go. It's been about five minutes. And I had a tree. He's on the tree. You can tell he's on the tree because he barks nonstop. We turn the dogs loose. And mm -hmm. oh my God, they go out like they're in a race, just yeah. flying. It's something that I noticed is how different their uh, barks were. I mean, the one the yeah. one that sticks out is Freddie Fender. His his bark is just so different than anybody else. And yeah. their handlers or their owners actually can tell if there's twelve dogs barking, they can tell which dog was theirs. And I was just really exactly. impressed with that. But by the end of the night, I actually could tell the difference as well. And right. and I thought that was pretty cool. And then mm -hmm. also the tracking systems. I mean, they could be miles away right. and, and still know where their yeah. dog was. But it was really neat because their collars was on the dogs and they mm -hmm. had this handheld gadget that was like sort of like a topographical map. Mm -hmm. And it told like where the dogs were and they were watching it. And I was just really amazed because I, yeah. I didn't know there was such a thing. You yeah. Know? <laughs> All right, so they were asking about which dog's which and how you can tell a difference. So we're... We're about 50, 60 yards apart from the dogs where they're treed, and the wildlife women are now starting to hear the difference in what the dogs sound like. So we're going to get into where we can actually see them, and just like a person, they're going to see what dog's making what kind of sound and bark so they can determine who's who. We got they are, They're on a coon. They've got one. Freddie Fenders, or they start hollering girl. names. And girl was my dog. Girl, yes. Yeah. Girl was so pretty. I loved girl. Mm -hmm. She was, you could tell, you can always tell sometimes when it's a girl uh -huh. dog because she acts like a girl. <laughs> and so I Yeah, she was it. first. Yeah, she was first. She was good that night. She was hot on the trails, buddy. My dog girl just treat a coon. <laughs> Let's go get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We see it. Oh, you see it. I see it. We found the first coon. Oh, you guys keep an eye on that coon. Watch what happens. Yeah, you got squad. Oh, what I told you. You got the tools and the arsenals. You use the coon out well. Come on, Ricky. <laughs>
I got her. Come on, 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 there we go. All right. there, I think Bridget finally got her, maybe. I got her. I got Come her. Come on, girl. Good job. Come on. Good job. Come on. Come on. So the girl was doing good. I think she was good. the first one to, to actually tree a coon. Mm -hmm. And that counts as so many points. And um, right. is it how quickly they get on the coon counted as so many points. I think. And then to, if they have a coon, when, when they actually, when the owner gets to the dog, if they truly have a coon, or sometimes mm -hmm. it was a Awesome. They actually got deducted points, right? Yeah. We had and what they call dog. those? Cheese heads or Cheese something? Cheese heads. Yeah, that's what they called them. I, that was a big but, joke that I didn't yeah. quite figure out, and I think we accidentally might have participated in a making fun of somebody when we yeah. didn't really know we what didn't were. know we were we evidently <laughs> offended somebody and their dog because i said that that poor dog wasn't no good that night because <laughs> he was too busy treating possums <laughs> so I think we fell right into that yeah, yeah we fell into it we were Somebody, set up yeah we were set up because <laughs> totally i'm sorry up. but we're just learning people <laughs> have to understand this was our very first time of ever coon hunt <laughs> and i i never thought that i would ever coon hunt so um but i so much enjoyed that i'm you know i'm a kind too. of like outside and walk and run around in the hills or whatever and <laughs> setting up food we're putting out corn and what have you for deer and what have you so getting out in the night like that and <laughs> running around and listening to dogs bark well, i was hooked all right so completely out of breath but we've tracked freddy and he's treat us a coon get on him old man <laughs> Shoot like a boss. Tucked in the mountains of eastern Kentucky, Perfect for a quiet weekend getaway or a fun field group adventure, visit us at Big Branch Cabins. Bring your ATV for some beautiful, scenic mountain riding. Our small cabin sleeps up to four people and the big cabin sleeps up to ten, with another cabin coming soon. So bring the entire family. There's tons of parking and plenty of room to enjoy the outdoors. Cook out, play cornhole, hike, fish, or simply relax. Come visit us at Big Branch Cabin Rentals nestled in the heart of Knott County. I'm Tina Thornsberry, the owner and guide of Beaver Creek Outfitters in beautiful Knott County, Kentucky, the elk capital of the East. If you were lucky and you drew a tag to come hunt in Kentucky, give us a call at 606-369-6594. Let Justin Ross, Brad, or myself help you feel your tag of a lifetime.
the first coon was treed, then they decided to put, split us up in a couple of teams. So uh, that way, maybe we could have more hands-on uh, with other dogs or what have you. So Bridget and Lisa ended up going out together, and I mm -hmm. got put with evidently a dog that liked to tree possums. <laughs> so you're the possum winner. <laughs> yeah, I was the cheese head winner for that night, as we soon learned later that they called them cheese heads. Yeah. Uh, still, and somebody I was just, please explain that to me. I don't know that deal either. I don't, I don't know, know what that's about. We'll have to look that one up. We may Google it. Yeah, somebody send us a message and let us know that's a coon hunter. <laughs> But uh, I just remember being exhausted. I had no idea how much walking coon hunters did. You all should all be skinny as rails because I was so tired up and down, up and down all night long. And I, I just had a whole new respect for, for how much walking a coon yeah, hunter does. They, I mean, I can't remember um, how many miles I ended up putting on my Fitbit, but it was quite a few that night. We oh, got, you were counting it all Yeah, night. I, I had my Fitbit that. on. I mean, it was well over 20,000 steps. <laughs> I know that. Um, I didn't have that many before I got there because we were driving so far to get there. Uh -huh. But um, I did have quite a few steps on there that night. Um, I remember it vibrating on my arm at one point and scaring the crap out of me because I thought somebody <laughs> had my arm in the woods. <laughs> like, you know. In the dark. Yeah, in the dark. But... Um, we, we had a good time, and I do we remember um, I had stepped on a log at one point, and it came up and hit me in the shin, but it wasn't too bad. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so, but we had a good time, and we ended up back at the coon club, Yeah. and everybody ended up leaving except for me and Bridget. We stayed there and ate on the food. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Round number two, and then maybe three, I don't know, but it was really yeah. good food. And, yeah. and another really cool thing is uh, Bo and the club actually presented us with a really nice plaque mm -hmm. uh, that we actually completed our first coon class and coon hunt. So it was pretty exciting. We had a great time, and I'd actually go again. Yeah, I'm biting at the bit to go again. I just don't have dogs or the property to do it, so give us a call. We'll go yeah. coon hunting with Take you. Take us coon hunting. Yeah. Opening day is a finish line to a race that started months prior. A race consisting of dedication, determination, and preparation. Resulting in blood, sweat, and anticipation. So when that moment of opportunity presents itself, you can draw peacefully knowing your time, energy, and preparation started with Rackology. Everything you need, all in one bag. Tucked in the mountains of eastern Kentucky, perfect for a quiet weekend getaway or a fun-filled group adventure, visit us at Big Branch Cabins. Bring your ATV for some beautiful, scenic mountain riding. Our small cabin sleeps up to four people, and the big cabin sleeps up to 10, with another cabin coming soon. So bring the entire family. There's tons of parking and plenty of room to enjoy the outdoors. Cook out, play cornhole, hike, fish, or simply relax. Come visit us at Big Branch Cabin Rentals, nestled in the heart of Knott County. guys this is Misty from Wildlife Women I just want to tell you that today we are going rabbit hunting last night we stayed at my sister's and watched the weather all night long and then from there we thought it was going to rain all day long but it finally it didn't rain we thank God for that one of the things we decided we wanted to do was go rabbit hunting Melissa and I had talked about it several times and just never really had the opportunity or anyone that would teach us. And my friend Steve said that he rabbit hunted all the time and he would be glad to teach wildlife women how to do it. 
So he called in a couple of his buddies and they brought their dogs. And the guys at Whitetail Heaven Outfitters were so gracious to let us come hunt their farm, yeah. and, which was beautiful, by the way. I was oh, yeah. so impressed with that yeah. property. Really nice. And uh, I even caught myself getting sidetracked at the deer tracks. <laughs> and the turkey tracks. <laughs> yes, yes. I took pictures. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it was really cool to get to go down there right uh, close to where we, where we live in Kentucky and, mm -hmm. and enjoy that farm and learn all about hunting rabbits. Hey everybody, Melissa and Bridget. We are uh, having a Wildlife Women event today. Um, it's rabbit hunting. We're doing a seminar and gonna go out and hopefully get some rabbits and cook them up later. We're going out to Whitetail Heaven Outfitters in Nicholasville, Kentucky. They're graciously hosting us. Newbies at rabbit hunting. None of us have ever shot a rabbit before. I think Melissa's been once years ago, but uh, it's going to be a fun day, and hopefully we will arrive in 1,000 feet. <laughs> and there's our GPS, because <laughs> we had no idea where to go. But um, hopefully we'll have a real good turnout. Um, have a few ladies that said they were coming. Yeah, we got new Wildlife Women members today, so mm -hmm. we're excited about that. And hope we have a good time, and the new girls We've like it. You've arrived at your destination. Um, but we don't see anything. <laughs> we don't know where that is. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Hall Road, I think is what we need to stay on, maybe. Stay on this one? I don't know. Well, hopefully we'll find our way there. So, Whitetail Heaven, where are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but we reckon Drake today, just so that you all know, non-typical. Waskily Rabbits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which was actually the name of the event. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I used my little picture of Elmer Fudd and, and the bunny. It was kind yeah, of Yeah, that was kind of neat. We try to play with words a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but we started out the day just, we, we were actually up really, really early. The crack of dawn yeah, early. very early. And we started out the day with a class. And Steve goes over all the uh, gun safety. And uh, we actually had girls that had never even shot a gun before. Right. And yeah. uh, we went over the gun safety. We went over exactly how to rabbit hunt, a little bit of safety with the dogs, mm -hmm. um, kind of how to gauge around where each other was. So we knew for sure that nobody would right. uh, end up in the wrong area and to, you know, keep out, keep watching out for each other. Right. And we all had to make sure everybody had on orange yep. because we mm -hmm. wanted to make sure everybody was seen and that's what you're supposed to wear when you rabbit hunt. Yeah. And they especially wanted to make sure we didn't shoot any of their dogs because yeah, that was the big thing. Dogs was important, which we don't want to hurt nobody's dogs for sure <laughs> but but we are learning to shoot so we had to yes. make sure we we understood uh not to shoot anywhere right. that near the dog how, was how to gauge the distance and how to to look and watch and two with the, the lady especially we have one lady that never shot a gun before in her life yeah and she just brought a shotgun from the family and we done a little bit of trap shooting yeah we did so that everybody could get familiar and make sure that they knew what they were doing and especially work with her a little bit before we headed out into the woods mm -hmm. with the dogs rabbit hunting to me was it's interesting because all you do is walk and you walk and you walk wasn't that much fun. We walked over, I don't know how many miles. I had my little tracker on. And I think we walked probably three to four miles that day and only seen one rabbit. We jumped a couple, but they would run straight over back into a hole again. So that was not the funnest thing ever. So we totally just walked all day long and walked all day long and walked all day long.
I'm Tina Thornsberry, the owner and guide of Beaver Creek Outfitters in beautiful Knott County, Kentucky, the elk capital of the East. If you were lucky and you drew a tag to come hunt in Kentucky, give us a call at 606-369-6594. Let Justin Ross, Brad, or myself help you fill your tag of a lifetime. X-Stand brand stands for something. It's something you can't put a price tag on, and it sets them apart from the rest of the industry. It was built from the ground up with a genuine work ethic that doesn't cut corners. X-Stand products are world class and use hunt safe technologies to go above and beyond normal safety standards. Just like the revolutionary technology of the JAW safety system, X-Stand products stand for safety and quality. X-Stand, simply smarter, simply safer. and we are rabbit hunting and I am rabbit hunting for the very first time with a 410 shotgun which is the very first time I've shot one and this is hard work there's a lot of briars a lot of climbing a lot of moving through brush the dogs have got a rabbit down but we're still waiting to see if it's going to come out so keep tuned We're heading out. The weather's not looking great though, so we're playing it by ear. Mm -hmm. You know, it looks like there's big storms coming, and so and we're trying to yeah. hurry. The wind was horrible. That's it, the biggest thing yeah. I can remember. Yeah, the wind was really bad. Um, they were worried about that part because um, evidently, with the wind blowing so bad the way it was, the beagles was having a hard time picking up scent because yes. the rabbit scent was blowing around so so much that the beagles were actually just doing circles or trying to find the scent and having a hard time. And uh, it was making it a little bit harder to find rabbits, actually. It was, it was really yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, we did find one though, which kind of yeah. ran right in front of us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Nobody got a shot. It's like, there goes the rabbit. Everybody's <laughs> hollering, there goes the rabbit. And everybody's like, okay. Like we didn't have arms and we didn't know what to do or something. I don't know. We couldn't get the. I mean, it was just like we was just in amazement seeing a rabbit or something. I don't know what the deal was. But here we go. We watched the rabbit. And like, here goes the rabbit. And it runs down through a big bottom and into a culvert. And beagles start flying after it. And here we are. Like, was we supposed to shoot that? So it took us a little bit to catch on. Oh, yeah. And at this point in time, we've been walking for quite a while, and I remember the yeah. weeds were really tall. And I, my sister joined us on this event too. And 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 again, I've, I've said many times, I'm so proud of her getting outside because it's not something she's normally done. But we were walking through some pretty high weeds and uh, quite long distances. And and I guess we just really need to make a plan who was going to shoot. So at this point in time. We all pick numbers and decide the next Waskily Wabbit that comes out will get shot at. And uh, we drew numbers to see who was going to shoot first. Right. Yeah, that made it a lot easier, <laughs> yeah. too, because I think we all were just kind of stunned <laughs> at the fact that we finally saw a rabbit, evidently, or something. I don't I know. know. <laughs> but uh, Miss Bridget here drew the first, she got the first number. So she was going to yeah. make the first shot. So. Yeah. And that worked out pretty good. I made the shot, but I didn't hit the rabbit. No. no. I hear something. Yeah, I hear it too. Oh, that's a dog. I was so, 
<laughs> I was so, um, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I was it, impressed it was, how fast it happens because I was, well, I, I wasn't on my game at all. It I come just, up and like set in front of her. But not real close. Yeah. But I mean, it was sitting there. And then when we realized, okay, there it is. And, and then it moved. And then it moved. And then all of a sudden. It was she, the wind. It was the wind that blew my bullet. It blew it completely. That's what she says. <laughs> out. <laughs> no, but I'll vouch anyway, for her. It I was totally really missed. windy. I totally missed. And we did not want to go home empty-handed. So thankfully, uh, the rabbit ran down the holler. And the guide actually shot it for us. So we at least got to see... A rabbit, a rabbit being killed and cleaned, which was quite interesting. I want to carry it. I'll put it in my back. I might get a picture with it. <laughs> Woohoo! Here you go. So you see, so that you do that to show them that's what they're doing. Yeah, uh, just to let them see it. They'll keep hunting. I think Mayor Brennan injured it, it so it slowed yeah. down yeah. so you can shoot it. Slow down so you can shoot it. Don't you think that's what happened, Brennan? There's a big, there's a big sinkhole down there, so that's, see, that's where that's where it came out. There you go. You can see the hair where I shot it. Here, 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 here. It was worth the experience. We uh, had a great time, as you say today, that some people like rabbit hunting, some people don't. I, I'm learning all this stuff, and I'm not for sure on how I'm going to do it all, but different guns different things i have enjoyed it but we did kill one rabbit <laughs> we had been there for quite a while and that wind was blowing mm -hmm. so hard and the, yeah. the storms were coming and it was it was like past lunchtime and we were yeah. starved out because we hadn't eaten anything probably since about seven o'clock that, that morning or something mm -hmm. so um i don't think we saw any more rabbits soon after no. that one was shot we went a little further and digging through the weeds with the beagles and what have you but um no i don't think we've seen any more that day so mm -hmm. that's something we're going to have to do a little bit more of we had a blast we learned oh, a lot yeah. but uh the weather just didn't cooperate so we decided to pack up and head back into where we started our class and to just spend the rest of the time doing a little skeet shooting that way we didn't get caught out in that uh, storm in the middle of the farm so I was really excited to do that because I'm always up for more practicing with shooting because I am new to it. Obviously, I miss the rabbit, so <laughs> we get to we get to go back and just do a little fun shooting and and some fun little competitive games until uh, the downpour comes, which did happen, by the way. Mm -hmm. It was it terrible, but um, yeah. So we spend the rest of the class just uh, on skeet shooting. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
a great story. The, the gun was actually in a fire and she restored it. It was a 16 gauge Winchester that we had and years ago when my mother's house burnt down, we was able to get the gun out of the house. Um, the house was still kind of smoldering. I knew where the gun was at and so I went in to get this gun out and it was, you know, it was, had a lot of smoke damage to it. Didn't have any fire damage of flames, but it did have smoke damage. And I let a friend of mine take it and go from there with the gun. He was able to restore it, completely put in new triggers. He restored the, the barrel. He restored everything on it. It looked like a brand new gun, but we had never shot it. And for those of you that don't know, my father got killed back in 1976 in the Scotia explosion. And my sister was three. And my mother was um, about three and a half, four months pregnant with me. So I had never got to see my dad. So being able to shoot this gun with my sister was one of the most amazing things ever. We sat and we talked about it. And we reminisced and we cried and we, we loved each other. But during this program, you're going to see that that gun still shoots. We was afraid that it wouldn't shoot, but it still does shoot. It is a great gun, it's a great shot. We had a blast with it. Hey y'all, so we're out here today on our first ever rabbit hunt, but it's a little bit more of a special day for my sister and I. Um, I'm really excited she's actually coming out and doing stuff with me now. She's not being an outdoors person awesome. at all. So I'm glad awesome. she's here with me, but uh, Something that's kind of ironic, and I don't know if y'all have heard our story or not, but I had an enormous, enormous fear of guns and uh, never uh, shot or anything like that. But today, uh, we're lucky and blessed to have a gun that was our dad's. And with me having my fear, I never even thought about get dad having a gun or shooting dad's gun or anything like that. So it's the first time I've actually seen it because I wouldn't even get around it. And uh, thankful for my sister who never... <laughs> really was outdoorsy or a gun person or anything actually took the initiative to make sure she got it and you could tell that story a little bit. The gun was uh, always kept in our mom's closet and I knew where it was at so when mom's house caught fire then once they got the fire out and it was smoldering I told the guys I was gonna go in and get the gun and they was like no you can't go in so either you go with me or I'm going by myself I'm going to get my dad's gun. So I went and got dad's gun out and one of the guys actually did a uh, a complete redo over it and now it's it's a Winchester 16 gauge and been offered a lot of money for it but you know it's pretty sentimental so it's, it's not going nowhere you couldn't offer no amount of money for this gun so we're going to shoot it today we're going to do it together and neither one of us has shot it before and it kicks <laughs> <laughs> pretty hard I've seen my uh my middle son shot it and my oldest son shot it and it kicks pretty hard but you know what it's going to be worth it to be able to do something that our dad got to do for those of you that don't know, our dad uh, passed away when Scotia blew up in 76. And um, we've uh, not been able to grow up with it. So which is one of the things that Wildlife Women is doing is, is reaching out to ladies and, and women that has not had an opportunity either to go hunting with their dad or shoot with their dad or have that family yeah. bond. And so today we're gonna shoot this gun together. She was three and mom was, uh, three months pregnant with me, so it's something that we've never got to do together and that we're going to do today. The memories that we was able to go back talking about how Dad was and all this, different things that we did was absolutely, you know, amazing. But to be able to spend this time with her and to have this memory of shooting Dad's gun was awesome. I think that this time would be much uh, more meaningful i guess is a good word to say if we take it and we shoot this gun together <laughs> ready yeah pull smoke job <laughs> So um, the rabbit hunt, you know, mostly it was able to spend time with the girls and to get out and to do things that we did. But for me, the rabbit hunting today was the most thing of shooting dad's gun and shooting skeet with it. And we was able to shoot different guns. I had a 410, a 16 gauge, and I shot a 12 gauge. So this is some things that I've never, ever, ever done before that I'm getting to do during um, 
being part of wildlife women. And that's what being in the wildlife women's about is to learn new things, to learn how to to shoot guns, to shoot bows, to to go fishing, to do things that you would never typically do if you was just sitting home. So I encourage you girls and I encourage you guys to get out in the outdoors, do things that you've never done because this is things that I have never done before. Um, so with that being said, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed my time here with Wildlife Women and to be able to grow and to go into learn more about the hunting and more about the outdoors and how to do things. Um, the rabbit hunt we was the first time we got there. It was kind of cool and it was kind of rainy, but you know it was able to hold off for us to have an educational class on how to use the guns, on what to do, what to expect when the rabbits are jumped, and the different things on how to basically when the rabbit is running to get your gun up fast enough before you can get the rabbit. But we were able to kill that one rabbit that, that day and it was amazing. But, you know, like I said earlier, it was just the most amazing experience being able to just to spend that time with the girls outside and to be able to hunt and to be able to hunt the rabbit. But, you know, that's mostly on this one. Um, my experiences and the information that I've got through rabbit hunting is it's it can be boring yeah it can be very boring if you're not having rabbits jumping everywhere but you do get your exercise in I mean that's one thing about rabbit hunting you definitely get your exercise in because you're all the time walking but I want to um just thank my dad for a moment because this is one I'm gonna try not to tear up and cry here but I always heard that my dad was a great man. You know, he was a veteran. He served in Vietnam. And to be able to have that gun, to be able to go in and get this gun, I, I actually wished I had it on screen to show you, but I don't have it today with me. And it's a beautiful, beautiful gun, a 16-gauge Winchester, like I said earlier. But I want to thank him for a moment, being the dad that he was to, to my sister and, and, you know, the husband to my mother that he was. And to be able to be the provider that he was, he was being for our family. And when he lost his life, you know, he was just 24 years old when he lost his life in the coal mines. But the memories of that gun, of him, you know, being able to hold something and be able to hold it in my hands and be able to shoot something that he had and to be able to shoot something that he shot before that he hunted with was one of the greatest experiences of my life. And to be able to spend that day with my sister and shooting that gun because she has her memories and, you know, it's just going to be an awesome thing to watch this and to see what we have done and to see the things that we have accomplished. And I just want to thank you all for allowing us to come into your homes to be able to share our experiences with you, to be able to share what we have learned through today and be able to learn through the next few months of our events that we have planned is pretty awesome. So I want to thank you guys for that. The rabbit event was um, really big and uh, it was something that was exciting. I always say that it's my favorite event. Um, <laughs> Everything's my everything favorite is event. my favorite event. I think it's just because um, we get to go out and be with other ladies, yes. and then sometimes we do have some co-ed where there's some men, but um, or with our children. But I think it's just the fact that it's it's really good therapy for, it is. for each one of us just to be able to get out and uh, be with other ladies or whoever else, and and just be able to to take in all the information that is given to us that we've always wanted to know but never had the chance to learn. And now we're getting to learn all this info. Yeah. And uh, it's really nice. And uh, what was even nicer is having a new wildlife yeah. uh, women a lady showed up. She didn't know any of us. No, she just, she just come mm -hmm. out of the blue and come there. Mm -hmm. And uh, she really enjoyed it. And uh, she talked about how much it was such a, a therapy for her yeah and uh she's she, actually came to more events and yes. is planning to uh, planning to come with us a lot more so yeah pretty she, cool yeah it's pretty cool and she, and she had never shot a gun either so yeah. she got to actually shoot a shotgun and be able to do all that yeah. so that's what we're about that's what um it just puts a big smile on my face it makes my heart smile because i'm all about trying to get everybody into the outdoors, ladies especially, because um, it's just something that we need to pass on to our kids. 
and it seems like technology and social media and everything is is coming into play so much anymore mm-hmm. and the kids are in the house on playstations and on Facebook or whatever else and all this social media stuff and, and these skills will be gone if yeah, we don't pass it down yeah and, and we our forefathers and everybody was brought up on eating off the land and I've got a lot healthier by eating off the land and instead of eating all this fast food stuff or stuff that's been processed mm-hmm. I've managed to lose weight by eating deer meat and everything so it's pretty awesome and uh I'm glad to be able to partake in opportunities like this and be able to mark stuff off my bucket list even. So our rabbit event was very uh, educational. I learned a whole lot. So our one rabbit kept us from being skunked, so we had had some success. Yes. But we're going to have to plan rabbit hunt number two. We still have that one in the freezer, and that way we will actually have enough to have a meal instead of just a bite. <laughs> yeah. That's what we need. <laughs> A good meal. <laughs> yeah. So watch for Hunting the Waskily Wabbits Part 2. Two.